Hey guys, welcome back to Community StarCraft 2. It's Magnet, and I have another Terran video for you that you probably will want to watch if you want to learn about the game. Today's video is going to be regarding Terran mechanics. We're going to be going over the very basics of mechanics as far as playing Terran, and really just playing the game in general, but we're going to kind of customize it for you Terran players so that you know, or rather you feel at home with what we're talking about here. Uh, this is going to be kind of an introduction to the video that follows this, which is the Terran Macro video, which at the time I recorded, and it seemed nice, but then I realized that it's just at an insane pace and I needed a video to kind of bridge the gap, and that's what this is for. So, uh, if you're really just starting to play StarCraft, and if you watch streams or whatever, and you don't know what the hell's going on, then this is a good thing to get you used to what is happening on the screen. Um, so we're going to be talking about the different things that make Terran a unique race and mostly the things that you need to pay attention to in order to get the most out of your gameplay in terms of like physical body usage and how things are processed in your brain so that you can uh, not waste as much time having to do all the little tasks that need to be done. So what we're going to do is let me make sure I didn't screw this up. Okay, cool. So we're going to jump back into game, and actually what I want you to do, this is a little weird, I'm going to have you go into the uh, start menu for Windows. We're going to be going into the control panel. You might see it start off like this, which is default for Windows, but go ahead and hit small icons. Go to mouse, hit pointer options, and I want you to make sure that this box is not checked. This is called mouse acceleration or enhanced point of precision or whatever. In StarCraft, it feels really slippery and it makes your mouse movements very imprecise. This is going to help you be able to click more accurately and click, I guess, quicker on different things. That's pretty much the same thing as what I just said, but never mind. Anyway, um, so yeah, just make sure that enhanced point of precision is off. Hit OK. Go ahead and close that. We'll get back into the game. And today, we're not going to really be playing any serious games or whatever. Uh, we're just going to be playing against an easy computer that'll just sit around and it'll do stuff every once in a while. Uh, but it's mostly just so that we can talk about the game and help you guys understand everything that's going on. What map should we choose today? Let's choose uh, this one, Derelict Watcher. So we're going to go ahead and enter the game. We're going to change our race to Terran since we're not Zerg. Ew, who would play Zerg? Just kidding, guys. And we're going to choose very easy. We'll go ahead and just choose a Protoss. Any build, doesn't matter. They'll just sit around anyway. Go ahead and hit start. And we're going to go over a whole bunch of different things here. And as soon as the game starts, I'm actually going to pause because I forgot to do something. And then just talk about hotkeys. But we will get there in just a moment. Hum, hum, hum. Hope you guys are all having a really nice day today. I know I am just talking about StarCraft doesn't get much better than that. Okay, so once we get into the game, we're going to go ahead and pause, hit F10, go to options. Make sure you have all the options that are set here that I recommended in the previous video in this playlist. So, yeah, just make sure that you know everything needs to be set in order to help you play better. Go down to hotkeys here. Make sure that the grids are, or the grids, make sure the hotkeys are set to something that you're comfortable with. I like grid. I think it's really easy to learn on, especially if you're switching races a lot. Uh, you can play on standard, whatever. Go ahead and poke around in these global hotkeys just a little bit too. Uh, a couple of changes that I like to make is I like to make my base camera be space. But make sure you understand what all these different hotkeys do. Because uh, there's a lot of different things that are really going to help you out. I'll cover a couple of them, but there are also a whole bunch of other ones that will help you just uh, get to different places, either on the map or in the game or whatever, that will help you be a lot more efficient with your actions. So. Yeah, just make sure your hotkeys are set up and that's where to do that. Go ahead and unpause the game. First thing you want to do when the game starts is you want to use your hotkeys in order to set your command center to something that you can refer back to. So select your command center, hit control 1 or control whatever number you want from 1 all the way over to 0 so that you have it set to something that you're comfortable with so that you can select this building at any time no matter what part of the map you're on. You also want to be sure that you're not coming down here clicking the train SCV button or really clicking any part of these buttons on the map because you want your keyboard to be doing this so that your mouse can be focused mainly in the center of the screen to be doing the little intricate stuff that needs to be done. So if I wanted to create another SCV, I would just go ahead and hit whatever hotkey that is. In my case, it's Q. 
Another cool thing you can do with these uh, control groups is that if your vision is over here for some reason, you can double tap the control group that it's in to center your vision back on that base. So notice that throughout this video, I will not, or at least I'll do my best not to touch anything down here with my mouse so that my mouse can stay in this general area. So okay, cool. Now Terran's a really, it's a pretty straightforward race. And I also want to mention that you should hotkey anything that you might find important. So let's say I need to hotkey this SCV so I can tell him to do something later. I can double tap on that SCV to get back to him. Or I can also just give it orders without even looking at it. So if I want to build SCVs and I'm not looking at my base, I just need to have one, hit Q. I don't need to look back at my base in order to do that. And that's really going to help you out so that you don't need to be constantly looking back at your bases in order to build stuff that needs to be built. That's one of the strongest advantages with Terran is that if you hotkey everything correctly, you actually don't need to look at your base at all in order to do really much of anything as far as producing units goes. So okay, cool. We're using our hotkeys just to make sure that we got a supply depot up, we got a barracks up, and back home we have SCVs producing. You want to make sure that all of your SCVs and all of your buildings are as active as possible. Considering this barracks is probably going to be important, I'm going to go ahead and hotkey that to 2, because that's just what I'm comfortable with. You can hotkey it to whatever you want. So that if I need to produce off of that barracks, and off of my command center at the same time, I'm using a minimal amount of actions to jump back and forth between these. You can see whatever I have selected is what's going to show up down here. So that if I have like the command center, or if I have like a whole bunch of SCVs selected, they'll show up down in this box. And these are all the various different orders that they can do. Alright, cool. So my barracks is done. After this, you probably want to put up your orbital command center. So I don't want to go ahead and look back at the orbital at the command center. I want to know that I can do this once it's done producing this SCV. So I don't even have to look at it. I won't click on it. I'll just make sure that it's doing it. And if we double tap, we can see that's exactly what's going on back here. All right, cool. We're back here at the base. I'm going to double tap my SCV. He needs to build another building here. And I need to make a Marine. You can notice that I'm just doing this all by changing what I select based upon my hotkeys and I'm doing all the actions on the keyboard here. So the first important racial mechanic that you want to take note of is the mule. Uh, that comes from the orbital command once it's upgraded and you can see all the different little spells that you can use down here. If I want to get a mule, I can just hit Z. I'll tell him where to call down to. If you just click on the minerals, he will mine from those minerals. These things are really powerful because they mine a whole lot of minerals really quickly, a lot more than just one SCV can. He returns about 40 minerals per trip, whereas an SCV returns 5. So that's really important, and the more mules that you can have, the better your mining is obviously going to be. And generally, the person that has the better mining is going to have the bigger army, and the bigger army is usually going to win the game. Okay, cool. Actually, let me demonstrate something really quickly with him. So I'm constantly producing SCVs, I'm making more marines, etc. And you'll notice I'm, these are all actions that can be done with the respective units that I select. I'm just not touching any of these buttons down here, and you'll get used to that too. So let's say this SCV is not working for whatever reason. We'll set him back to work. And then in order to be sure that he's going to go back to work once he's done building this command center, we're going to hold shift. We're going to send him back to the mineral line by right clicking on the mineral line. So when he's done with this, he's going to go be like, OK, I'm going to go back to work and help you mine more. That's exactly what you want. You don't want your workers sitting around. But in the event that they are, let me go ahead and stop this construction. In the event that they are, you're going to get a little notification here that says you have an idle worker. If you want to get that worker back to work, you can use F1 to select him. So let's say I have my command center selected here, it's not done building, and I hit F1, it's going to select the SCV that's not working. So then I can do that, and then I can send him back to work. If I have a whole bunch of them that aren't working, let's say they're all on different parts of the map for whatever reason, let's say they all built different buildings, for example, I can hold Control and F1 to grab all the idle workers at once and send them back. Now I feel like I probably should cover the basics of shift and control since I did in the Zerg video as well. Uh, shift is generally going to be a way to stack orders on top of each other. So if you can see this little white line is where these Marines are going to run once they're done building. If I hold shift, I can create different points for them to run to and just stack the orders on there. So they do this first, and then this, and then this, and then this. You can do that for any unit. So if I need him to attack like let's say this part of the base and this part of the base I don't have to babysit every single one of those actions I can just tell him to attack by clicking here hold shift click there click there click there and you can see this red line will say well this is where I'm going now this is what I'm doing now and this is where I'm gonna end up 
So yeah, use shift to stack commands like that. You can also use shift to select individual portions of units. So let's say I need to select one Marine and one SCV for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that. So I have the Marine selected. I'll hold shift and click one SCV. Now I have both of them selected and they can both take orders that they have in common together. So they're both running to this point. So all right, cool. Let's get back to control groups really quickly. With this new command center, you generally want to put all your command centers on the same control group so that you can use them to land mules together. So if I have this selected, I can hold shift, select this command center, and I can re-hotkey everything to this one if I hold control one. Or whatever other hotkey I want. I can set it to six, I can set it to you know four, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then I can also uh, use a couple of different things to assure that I'm cycling through these properly. So if I have a regular command center, uh, on here, which is this one, it's not transformed into orbital yet, and I have an orbital command selected, but I can only have the controls here for the orbital. I can't, I can't make an orbital with this one because it's second in line. If I want to get to this one, I can use tab, and it'll change the controls to the other type of unit in here. You can see that there's a little tiny brighter outline of light green on here on the new command center. So you can see which one you're actually controlling over there. So then I can hit orbital, then I can go back to what I'm doing. I can land mules, whatever. Not enough energy. And to land these mules, again, I already had the command selected. I just held shift in order to stack the orders on top of each other and just clicked on all these different things to give it different orders. Since it lands mules really fast, there's no really delay between the different things that's, that are being done. So okay, cool. Let's say I want this guy to build a command center. Again, we want him to build something, and then we want to hold shift and send him back to work so that he, when he's done, he goes back to what he's doing. Another thing you can do is if you don't want to be as precise with selecting as many workers to build a whole bunch of different buildings, you can just select like three or four at once, tell it to build a barracks, and then uh, only one of them will go. It's not like all of them will go unless you tell them all to move like that. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's get to control here. Control is going to select all the different types of units that you want to select that are on the same screen. So let's say I have these five Marines. Rather than being like, I want you, shift, you, shift, you, 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 I can just clear my selection really quickly. I can just control and click on one of the Marines. It'll select all the Marines that are in my screen. This is going to be especially helpful for Terran because they're kind of the race that relies the most on having good unit control. So if you can select the type of unit that you want to control properly instead of just kind of derping with your whole army, that'll be a lot better. This guy's idle. Remember how to do this. F1. Get him back to the mineral line. We have a couple of units just kind of being jerks over here. No big deal here. We'll just make sure that they all die. Whoops, lost a marine. No big deal. Actually lost two marines. Ah, oh, sad. Okay, cool. So we have all of our command centers. Again, remember how to get to the second in command or second in line here, I guess. It's a really hard to explain. So we can land our mules with the ones. We can't land mules with this one yet because it's not an orbital, so we'll just hit tab. Make it an orbital command. Okay. Now we also have a second barracks that we should probably be produ producing on. So again, you have this barracks selected, hold shift, control two or whatever control group you want to set it to, now you're controlling both barracks at once. And if you produce off of both of these, it'll spread the production off as evenly as possible between all the different barracks that you have selected, or buildings in this case. So if I need to make SCVs from all these, I, it'll spread them out evenly. As you can see, these little white squares appear. There's one in here, there's one in here, and one in here after I told it to build three SCVs. All right, cool. One also cool little trick is your supply depots will raise and lower like this so that you can get in and out and create little walls that you can control. So you can kind of think of this as like the front door of your base. Another cool mechanic is that Terran buildings all, or at least a lot of them, will lift off so you can actually build an expansion in your base and then move it down there later. So just take some time to poke through the race and get you to all these cool little things that you can do with Terran. Another really important thing is you can repair. So this thing got damaged a little bit by the zealot. You can see I told an SCV to walk over here and repair it. If you want SCVs to just repair whatever's in their area, you can right click repair and he'll just walk over there and do it himself. And then if he's idle, like if he's not doing anything whatsoever and there's stuff to repair, then uh, he'll go and just do it for you. You don't have to tell him to. All right, cool. So we have a whole bunch of energy on our command centers. The mules do require energy to call down, so we'll go ahead and call those down by using shift and just clicking over and over. And all these mules will just mine an insane amount of money. 
you can see how fast that we depleted all these patches that we were landing mules on before. So you need to be a little bit careful and try to spread your mules out just a little bit so they don't just deplete patches and hurt your mining too much. Alright, let's go ahead and take gas. Which you can do by all these little actions down here. You need to get used to all those little things. And like I said before, the macro video that's going to be following this is going to be really intense. So you need to be sure that you understand all the actions that are going on right there. So play a handful of games before you watch that one so you're not just completely blown away by everything that's going on at once. Now as far as a couple of other things, to keep yourself safe, you can build bunkers, which you can load these uh, bio units out of. Every unit that comes out of the barracks can be loaded into a bunker, and that'll just help the marines uh, fire longer without dying, since they'll be inside of a building. We'll move this base as well. So again, lift off, you can tell it to land. Let me get to another little point that I have here. We're going to get to camera hotkeys right now so that you guys can jump all around the map and around different points of interest that you might want to assure that uh, you can see everything that's going on at each one of your different bases. Go ahead and pause the game again. Go into F10. Go down to hotkeys once again and go to global. Check out this camera group. And from uh, current lo or rather create location 1 through 4, you can see their map to F5 through F8. This is setting these control groups as well, and you can jump to these locations here. So, yeah, you want to check these out. I'll show you what they do. Uh, resume. So, let's say we have one base here. We'll go ahead and hit Control F5. We have one base here. We'll go ahead and Control F6. We have a base here. We'll go ahead and hit Control F7. If I ever need to jump to these bases, rather than you know, fumbling around and clicking on the minimap or scrolling around like this, I, that's pretty imprecise. I can just hit F5, F6, and F7. And it'll jump me back to the exact location that my camera was at when I hit those hotkeys. So it's kind of like a unit hotkey, except for it just remembers a space on the screen. So that's one cool thing. It's not amazingly important. I guess it is pretty important if you get used to it. Like, let's say you're out here and you're trying to fight people or whatever, and then you get attacked at your main base, you can just be like, oh, F5. Okay, cool, I'm already here. Now I can control whatever needs to be controlled over here. The other thing is that I still have my Marines and stuff selected, so if, for example, my base is being attacked, I already have my army selected, uh, I can just, you know, go F5, and then I can tell them to attack here, and they're going to run there automatically because I told them to do that. And I don't have to waste time by being like, okay, I have my army selected, oh no, I'm being attacked, okay, now, now I need to click here, oh no, I need to click here, and now I need to send them back. You're just reducing the amount of actions required in order to do all that. Let me show you a couple of other cool things. We'll build a few extra production buildings and we'll be able to hotkey them all together. And we'll make more use of that tab function that I was talking about before with the different types of command centers. So I'm going to, on my hotkey for the barracks, I'm going to also hotkey all of these production buildings. Now again, if you remember, you can hold shift to add units to hotkeys, or rather selected groups of whatever you have. Um, but if you hold Control and Shift at the same time and just click on one of these factories, you'll select them all at the same time and you'll include them in your current selection. So we'll add all of our factories to one hotkey, and that is along with our barracks, so that you're controlling all of them at the same time. And we'll get to that in a minute as to why that's important. Uh, actually, we'll do that now. We'll, we'll talk about add-ons a little bit later. Uh-oh, we're being attacked. Oh no. And the stalker is totally derping out like hardcore, so he's gonna die. Okay, cool. So our factories are done. Our SCVs are all idle. You can see we have four idle workers right now. We'll hit Control F1. We'll tell them to go back to work. Now we have zero. Cool. So we have all of our factories done. Now, right now, you might think, okay, cool. Well, we can produce marines if we hit two, and it'll show up on here. But what if I don't want to make factory units? Again, just use Tab and then you can tab to the factory controls as you can see over here and make whatever factory units you want as well. Now you might be wondering what's up with all these units that are grayed out? Why can't I make these units? I want to make these units, etc. And the, the, yes, you can see I have great conversations with myself. Uh, that's because some of these do require either different buildings or different add-ons to these buildings. So you can see these marauders, it says requires an attached tech lab. Almost every production building you have really should have an add-on to it because it's either going to be able to produce units twice as fast or it's going to be able to unlock higher tech of units. So we'll put a tech lab on here and a barracks, or rather a uh, reactor on here. 
We'll do the same with our factories too. You can see these add-ons do disable your buildings for just a little bit, but once they get up they add some extra functionality that you just didn't have before. Let's land all of our mules once again if we remember how to do that. Cool. So we have all of our mules landed. We're mining a whole bunch of money from here. And you do want to mine with some SUVs as well. So we'll just set all the rallies to this one mineral patch. And we'll make our command centers all produce these. And again, I don't have to look at these buildings in order to make these units produce. Okay, cool. All of our add-ons are done. So we do need supply depots. That's kind of a shame. If you get in that point and you are in a panic, you really should just build some supply depots so that you can make it so you can produce units, because right now I can't. If I try, you'll see the progress bar doesn't move at all. Or if you get into a bad spot, you can also use this call down extra supplies in order to kind of land another supply depot on top of a supply depot you already have, granting you that extra supply. You don't want to rely on that too much, you really just want to, want to rely on the mule mechanic, considering that is very strong and there's really no downside to using mules. Uh, we'll get to scan here in just a second once we get more energy. And again, this, this SCV got blocked. He couldn't build. I can just lower my depot so that he can get out and get back to work. I have more idle workers again. Control F1. We'll send them back to work. And we will get them busy. Alright, cool. So our add-ons are done. Now we can make these marauders, which are very strong units, off of these barracks. But only the tech lab can contain the marauders. The other add-on is so that you can produce either marines or reapers two at a time. So if I put a whole bunch of marines in queue, which you, you don't really want to do that much, you can see they're being produced two at a time. And then again, if I want to create for my factory, you can create tanks now that these are unlocked by the tech lab, but they'll only be on the tech lab. The reactors can produce either mines or hellions two at a time. So again, you can see two hellions in queue here, two in here. And that just makes it so that you'll get the same amount of production, but you don't have to build another factory. A reactor is cheaper than another factory. And of course, for the, for the sake of these other units, the tech lab just makes it so that you can put out more powerful units off of the same building. All right, we'll get mining again, again, using our shift techniques. So we can select little groups of units. And we'll land our mules once again. You definitely want to land those pretty much as soon as they're available so that you have the money to spend. And I'm spending terribly. This is not ideal. And you'll see in the macro video I'll talk a lot about that. But for right now, we're just kind of learning how to play everything. Again, you can see I did give some commands to these tanks. But I didn't really do anything that down here on the panel. I just used my keyboard in order to do that. It's really important that you do stuff like that. Alternatively, some people also like to hotkey a little differently. You can hotkey all your factories to just a different hockey if you'd rather just have your barracks separated. And in order to remove from my control group there, I just clicked on the pictures. So if I had all these, let's say I had all these selected, and I only want my barracks out of this selection, I can just hold shift and keep clicking on these until I have only barracks. So some people like to do it this way, so they can say two, I want marines and marauders, three, I want hellions and tanks, for example. We're supply blocked again, again you can land depots, but you really just want to build depots instead if you can help it. That's really just to get yourself out of a jam. And one other important hotkey that we have here is, oh no, we're getting attacked, ah, lift off and run away. You can also just hit F2 to select all of your army units. And then you can be controlling your army all at once without having to go back and grab them. So you don't want to rely on that too much. You actually want to hotkey your army if you can, if you, you know, have the attention span to do it so that you can hit something like four or five. Because this is going to pull your entire army, and you might not necessarily want to pull your entire army to report to something like this. So we'll get this base relanded, F2 to get him back out of here. There's a lot of different tricks like that that you can get used to. And again, we have energy on our command centers. We really need to land mules, so we'll go ahead and land these. And you want to make sure your buildings are, bu are busy as well. So we'll get these all hotkeyed to how we had it before. Marines and tanks or other marines and marauders and then tab we'll make hellions and tanks so you can set these up in ways that you're comfortable again you saw me hit control to select all the different tanks so I could order them around control to select the marauders control to select all the hellions and I can separate them all all out based upon what position they need to be in the battle so yeah um, there's not really that much more to talk about with Terran. Like I said, they're a pretty straightforward race. There's no like underlying hardcore mechanics that you need to be keeping on top of. 
Other than making sure that you have the timing in your brain to land your mules as soon as they're available, always make SCVs whenever your command centers are idle, and produce units off of your buildings. We'll get into a lot more advanced stuff as far as spending money and what else you should actually be doing during the course of a game instead of just sitting here and looking at your, your pretty units um, in the next video. And that's, that video is going to be pretty intense, so make sure you have a good grasp on everything that we're going over here. I'm not sure that we have a whole bunch more to cover, so uh, we'll just go ahead and put this cute little splash screen back up here so that you can see a nice logo and whatever else. This is the part where I talk about my stream. If you want to see me live stream, you can check out that link down there, twitch.tv slash magnetsc2. Just go ahead and follow me and you will get alerts as to when I go live. Um, yeah, the next video is the macro video and it's going to be pretty crazy, so I uh, hope you're prepared for that. And by the next video, I mean the next one in the playlist for the Terran tutorials. So jump on that playlist if you're not already and we'll get going.